Today I'll show you how to remove the background from a photo, and then how to add a new one. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along, I've left a download link for the photos I'll be using in the video description. The first thing we need to do is make a selection of our subject so that we can remove her from her background. To do that, I'll grab the selection brush tool. Now using this tool, we can quickly paint a selection over our subject. Now my brush is pretty small right now, so I'll just use the bracket keys on my keyboard to increase the size. And then I can go ahead and click and drag to make my selection. I'll just zoom in here to make sure I've selected everything. I'll need a smaller brush to do that. And as you can see, I've selected too much. To remove from your selection, just hold Alt or Option, and then you can click and drag to remove those areas. All right, I think I have just about everything in my selection. I had a little bit of a tricky spot right here. All right, there we go. Whenever you're using the selection brush, I suggest you use this refine option right up here in the context toolbar. When you click refine, you're able to paint over edges that have tricky areas to select. And mainly for me, this means I end up painting over the edges of the hair. When you refine and paint over the edges, you're telling Affinity to take a second look at these tricky spots where there's lots of flyaway hairs that are hard to select. With that done, I'll go ahead and press apply right down here. And now we have our selection made. With our subject selected, I'm going to apply a mask right over here. And I'll press on mask. And now you can see we've removed the background. I'll just press Command or Control D to deselect. Now that I've deselected, you might be thinking, ooh, that selection is a mess, and I agree with you, <laughs> but we're going to clean it up in just a second. Before we do that, I just want to put her new background behind her. To put this new background behind her, I'll just go up to File, and then I'll go down to Place. I'll select the new background and open that up. And then I'll click and drag to add this behind her. So that I can still see our subject, I'm just going to move this background layer so that it's beneath her layer. And now I can go ahead and adjust where this is placed. I like how this looks, having her over here by the orange flowers. Okay, so now that that's done, let's zoom back in so that we can fix this selection. Now that we're zoomed in, you can see that the selection actually doesn't look too bad. Because it's against a darker background, you can see that some of the messy areas of our selection are blending into the background nicely. So all we need to take care of is this fuzzy white glow here, and we can remove that by painting on the mask. I'm going to select the mask, and with that mask selected, I'll grab the paintbrush. And I'm going to paint in black paint to remove this hazy white area. I painted a little bit too much, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo that. And now the edges of our hair are looking pretty harsh, so to fix this, I'm going to lower the flow of my paintbrush quite a bit. I'll bring it down all the way to 8%. I think that looks pretty good. When you lower the flow of your paintbrush, what you're doing is you're telling Affinity to only apply 8% of your black paint. So now it will remove a little bit of her hair, and it looks a little bit more transparent the way hair should look. I think this looks pretty nice. This area looks a little strange to me. I think I'm going to switch my paint color to white, and I'll try to bring back a little bit of that area. Oh, that looks a lot better. I think when I refined the selection, it got rid of that hair on accident, but now that looks a bit better. Okay, and with that, we've cleaned up our mask. I think this looks a lot better. 
Before I finish though, I just want to remind you, if you've lowered your flow, Affinity will remember that setting. So make sure that you quickly change your brush back to 100% so that you don't get confused later when your paint isn't showing up. <laughs> okay, with that fixed, I'll press Command or Control 0 to zoom all the way out. And now we can take a look at the bigger picture. Our model is standing against a background that doesn't match her perfectly. In fact, blending two images together so they look like they match is actually a pretty hard thing to do. But in this video, I just want to give you a few quick and easy steps that you can use to make these images match better. The first step you need to do is you need to focus on the lighting. I'm going to apply a brightness and contrast adjustment. And I only want the brightness and contrast adjustment to affect our model. I'll make it a child layer by clicking and dragging it right on top of our model's layer. So you can see now that's a child layer, and this layer will only affect our model. The goal of adjusting the lighting right now is to make it so our model matches the background's lighting situation. So the first place I like to start is actually the contrast. Look at the darkest shadows right here. You see how they're not quite as black as her darkest shadows? They look a little bit more gray. That's because her photo has a bit more contrast, so we need to lower her contrast until her shadows match that tree. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. In addition to that, we can focus on the brightness now. I think she looks very bright. Look at these bright highlights on her dress. I'm just going to darken that a little bit. Okay, and I think that looks better. Once you've fixed up the lighting of your subject, we can move on to the colors. I'm going to apply a white balance adjustment. Make sure that it's been placed as a child layer so that it's only affecting the model. And then come on down here to the white balance slider. Usually when I'm doing this, I'm not 100% sure which direction I should slide this in. So I like to just move it up and down to see which direction seems to look better for the environment. And in this case, as I move it toward the orange side, it really doesn't look right. I need to move it toward the blue. The more blue I make it, I think it looks better, but maybe not quite that much. Okay, I think I'll move it to about there. I'm just going to select both of these layers that we just used, and then I'll show you how this looked before. And here's the after. Do you see how much better this matches? I know it makes our model look a bit more dull, but she really does blend into the background better. But if you're thinking it does look dull, I agree with you, and we can make a few changes now that affect the entire photo. I'll close up the group and select our model's layer, and let's add a little bit more saturation to bring the colors out. I'll go to our adjustments and apply an HSL adjustment. There we go. And then I'll increase the saturation to make the colors pop a bit more. Okay, those colors look pretty bright, but I think I'll bring it up quite a bit like that. We can always come back later and adjust this more. Now that the colors look better, I think the whole image needs to be a bit brighter. So I'll go back to the adjustments and apply another brightness and contrast adjustment. Because these layers are on top of everything, the whole image is being adjusted at the same time, which is perfect. I'll just increase the brightness, and I'll increase the contrast as well. And wow, this picture is starting to look a little bit too punchy, so I'm going to close out of this. I'll click right here to open up the HSL adjustment again, and I'll just decrease the saturation. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. With that, I'll select both of these layers so that we can see the before, and here's the after. Great work on this project. You now know how to remove your model from a background and place her in a new one. This is just the beginning of what you can do in Affinity Photo. This amazing program has so many different things you can do with it, and if you want to learn even more about that, you can check out my Affinity Photo course. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.